Okay, back with some quick math. Uh, like, subscribe, share the videos. Let's go. Um, what 4.1.4 um, f of x equals. Okay, so we need to show that. Great. So this is another show that question. Show that that tells us we know what we're supposed to end up with. So you're supposed to end up with all of this. Okay. You can't use that information. You need to end up with that information. Okay. Um, so this is a quadratic, right? The parabola. That's what we're looking at. That's the quadratic this is the quadratic function in fact there are three different um, equations when you have a quadratic function there's the one that's up there uh, but then there's another one and we call this our turning point form okay same equation um, but there's a oh, oh, let's write that again there's a, a there's an open bracket um, then there's a x minus p close bracket squared uh, plus Q okay and when you have it in this form okay that does look a little ugly right let's just make that a nice A when you have it in this form um, then you know uh, P and Q are your turning point great that's the turning point form when you have it in that form you know that uh, both P and Q are your turning point there's other forms of the same equation so you could have it in this form and this third one is the one that we need to use for our question now. Um, a, open bracket. Now let's just quickly mention this before we move on. This A that you see here, this A that you see here, and that A over there in that equation on our left, uh, on top. They're all the same A, okay? So we, if you do manipulations and you move stuff around, it's all going to be the same A. Anyway, let's move on. So um, the other equation looks like this. X minus X1 and then x minus x2 okay that is a x right and this form of the equation is the one we're going to use here that form you use when you have your as we in this question your two x intercepts okay because we have our two x intercepts this is the form of the equation that we are going to use this one you would use if you had your turning point we don't have our turning point um, Right, so either of those three can work for us. The one we're going to use is this one because we have x intercepts. Great. So now let's go ahead and do our substitutions into this equation. So f of x is going to stay f of x for now. Okay, we are going to get to a point where we're going to substitute for that, but for now it's still just f of x. A is also going to stay a. Okay, great. x is going to be x minus x1 is going to be, let's go with that one, right? So it's the minus 2. This is going to be in a bracket and then again another x and then minus the other x intercept which is going to be our 4 uh, for this question so it's more 4 there minus the 4 let's just neaten up uh, neaten, neaten, neaten up this so the negative and the negative multiply so this is going to be a x plus the 2 and x minus 4 okay great at the point that we are now okay so we have f of x equals uh, a and then our two brackets at this point that we are now you have one unknown okay so we have variables and un unknowns variables are x and y those are actual numbers uh, they can change and at different places on our function they will be different things right so these x and y's they are variables this a thing over here is our only unknown that's a number we don't know what number it is yet but for that function on the left hand side there it will always be the same number um, we need to find out what that unknown is, right? So you have one unknown. So if you have one unknown, what do you need? You need one coordinate that's on your function, right? If you have one unknown, you need one coordinate. So let's go look at our function, and there is this coordinate that we don't or that we do have, right? So you have one unknown, you need one coordinate. There is our coordinate. So we have options of what we can do now. Either we can try and simplify this a bit more because obviously this we can multiply out. I think that's what I'm going to choose to go with. Or you could do your substitution immediately there. So where you put this y value in that place because that's y. And you put this x value in both of those places. Okay. So um, I'm not going to do that. I'm first going to simplify a little bit. right? So I'm going to leave that a over here for now. Uh, my x is going to be okay so i'm going to multiply this out so it's x times x x times minus 4 so that's going to be x squared minus 4x right this is going to be a positive 2 times x so it's going to be plus 2x and positive 2 times minus 4 is negative 8 
uh, well I forgot about my x there my x is there now so these are like terms those two in the middle so I'm gonna have a open bracket x squared minus 4 plus 2 is gonna give me a minus 2x I forgot my square I'll put it in there now there it is and that is a minus 8 okay so uh, I have simplified up slightly inside my brackets the next thing that we need to do is to go and substitute coordinate t so this over here is my y so I'm gonna say minus 7 equals my a that's what I want to find out x x is gonna be our 5 right so this 5 over here is gonna take the place of x so that's gonna be 5 squared minus 2 times our 5 and minus 8 Great. Uh, so all of that we can simplify. So the left hand side is going to stay a minus 7. We have an A over here. That's going to be 25. Uh, minus 10. And minus 8. All of that you will go put in your calculator. And you're going to say minus 7 equals A times 7. Right? And you want to get rid of that 7. So you're going to divide both sides with your 7. Divide both sides with your 7. Those cancel. And your left hand side you have a negative 1 your right hand side you have a so a is equal to minus one great so now you're gonna take this a and you're gonna go put it back there okay so let's go and write that down so we are going to uh, rewrite this over here and instead of a we are gonna put our minus one so let's say f of x okay I'm, I need to just make some space for myself so let me erase all of this yeah that let's get rid of that um, and we are saying f of x is equal to a we said is minus 1 and we have x squared inside minus 2x minus 8 the negative is going to multiply in the negative changes all of our signs on the inside so that you have a minus x squared you have a plus 2x and a plus 8 so over here we have now shown that our function is equal to that great so we've done 4.1.4 uh, okay uh, let's 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 discuss the range as well and in the last video will be on 4.1.6 so range range is all possible why why values okay so when you look at your function over here you want to know what are the possible values of y that my function can have so I'm gonna draw in some random line here's a random line uh, that's at the bottom so I'm just gonna say this is maybe like minus 10 okay just random um, does that red line touch your function well it does it touches on those two places okay um, so the graph exists at minus 10 now these arrow heads they tell us that the graph continues infinitely down so if I go down to negative infinity maybe my graph is still gonna touch because of those um, arrow heads okay well strictly speaking you can't actually get to negative infinity so it would be excluded but the arrow heads tell us that continues infinitely okay so it doesn't matter how far down you go your function still exists okay let's move that red line up so if I if I move it up okay there the red lines at zero does the graph touch yes it touches those two points let's move the red line further up over there yes it still touches at those two points does my red line touch over here it doesn't touch right so there's a certain point where I go where my function touches and then it no longer touches anywhere beyond that okay so that is what we need to find we need to know what is the y value over here so what we're gonna do is we need to find the y value of our turning point y value of our turning point so that's what we want to find next let's, let's get rid of all of this quickly y value of our turning point how do you find your y value of your turning point um, it's gonna be easy enough because we already have our function okay so we know the uh, x value at this turning point it was the k which we determined earlier right it was the k that we found or they gave us earlier so k is 1 so this x value of your turning point this line over here is x equals 1 so we're just gonna take our 1 and we're gonna take our 1 and we're gonna substitute it into our f of x right as our x value which we are given here okay so we are gonna say uh, f of x and the x value is so x value is 1 so f of 1 is equal to 1 squared minus 1 squared sorry plus 2 times 1 plus 8 
okay so minus one squared uh, so that is going to only the one is being squared right the negatives not being squared it's going to stay minus so that's going to be a minus one uh, plus a two plus a eight and that is going to equate to a nine so that tells me uh, why at this point let's erase this y at this point is 9 so if y was 10 your graph doesn't touch anymore if y is less than 9 if y is 8 your graph does touch okay so what is our range the range is from somewhere to somewhere so we're going to say y because we're dealing with y values we're going to make this e thing right which means element of y is an element starting somewhere going to somewhere we always start at the smallest point okay so as we said our arrowheads go down so this function goes infinitely down it starts at negative infinity okay like I alluded to I mentioned uh, that infinity negative and positive infinity you can never actually get there so it's always excluded values so we're gonna make not a square bracket square bracket is when it's included we're gonna make a round bracket to say it's excluded okay and the highest y value so it's from minus infinity all the way from minus infinity all the way up up until 9 not past 9 okay so 9 is going to be your highest value is the 9 included yes because the graph actually touches 9 so because 9 is included we're going to give that a nice square bracket uh, I'll deal with 4.1.6 in the last video